We're going to be talking about complex functions right now. Hey everyone, it's Brian. Welcome back to the complex analysis video series. In this episode, we're talking all about complex functions. So what is a complex function? Well, by definition, a complex function is just a function whose domain and range are subsets of the complex plane. Remember what a function really does. It takes every element in its domain and maps it to a single element in its range. And here, the domain and range could be all of C, the complex plane, or just a subset of C. Usually we denote f of z, the complex function, by the letter w. Similar to in regular analysis, we usually say f of x equals y. Here we say f of z equals w. And I've just drawn a picture here to kind of remind you about what a function really means. It's just a mapping or an assignment of all the points in some domain A. So here's some general do domain I drew with some points in it, and they map over to this other domain B by this function W, F of Z. And remember, if I evaluate F at A, and that's B, we see that B is the image of A under F. Here I have a complex function, f of z equals z squared plus iz, and I want to find f of i. And this works very similarly to how regular real functions work. I'm just going to substitute in this value everywhere I see a z. So f of i is equal to now i squared plus i times i again. And we know that i squared is negative 1 i times i is plus i squared, which is another negative 1. So in this case, f of i is equal to negative 2. Anytime you want to evaluate a complex function, we simply substitute in the value for z. If I want to find f of 2 plus i, I'll simply substitute in 2 plus i. And now I would have to FOIL this out. This is 2 plus i times 2 plus i. I'll distribute this i and make this 2i plus i squared. Here I'll FOIL. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is 2i. i times 2 is 2i. And then plus another i squared plus 2i. And then this i squared, I'll just say that's negative 1. And now I'm just combining like terms. So I've got 4 minus 1 is 3. I've also got an i squared there. That'll be another minus 1. So the real part is 2. And then I've got 2 plus 2 plus 2 equaling 6i. There's another example of evaluating this function. Another way that's common to represent complex functions is in terms of their real and their imaginary parts. And we usually call the real part u and the imaginary part v. So you'll notice that the v has an i next to it. u and v are both functions of real variables x and y. So remember, z is equal to x plus yi, and we can write any complex function in this form. Let's do that with my last function I just wrote. So remember that z is equal to x plus iy. And if I distribute this, if I FOIL this again, this would be x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi plus ix plus, I would get i times i is i squared. That's negative 1. So this will be negative y. And now I'll simply combine like terms to make this x squared minus y squared minus y. And then I'll have i times x plus 2xy. And so this piece, the real piece, is u of x and y. And this piece, without the i, is v of x and y. So u is the real part of the function, and v is the imaginary part of the function. I'll wrap this video up by saying that we can also represent the real and the imaginary parts of a function u and v by their polar form. If we let x be r cosine theta and y r sine theta, we can also write any complex function in its polar form this way.
In this episode, we introduced complex functions, how to evaluate them, and breaking them up into their real and their imaginary parts. I hope you'll join me next time where I'll introduce the complex exponential function, and we'll do some cool things with that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a great day.